Welcome to Gonzaga Nation SI, the Gonzaga Nation Media Network. This is a Monday, our weekly WCC roundup, where we kind of share a few things that are going on in the world of the WCC. As you know, if you're listening to this podcast, a great underrated league of 10 schools, uh, lots of big time players, lots of uh, activity. Uh, throughout the summer with players being drafted, three direct players drafted in the first round, uh, as well as a number of great transfers moving to these schools. But a couple quick storylines that I just wanted to catch up on um, over the last week or so. Uh, Santa Clara, the fourth team out of the WCC to take an overseas trip. Uh, they headed over to Europe Um and they've uh, kind of had a mixed bag so far. Uh, won their first game that I saw. Then they played against a Paris team, um, professional team over in Paris. And the other Paris got off to a, a great start. Uh, Santa Clara dug themselves a hole. And then in the second half, uh, kind of a, a, a tie game, if you want to call it that, in the second half, even though uh, Paris, as I mentioned, jumped out to a big lead. So um, when you look at the box score, nothing's necessarily jumped out too much at you. Um, again, we touched on this with the European um, overseas trips and the importance and the value of these. And you can't get caught looking too much into stat lines. You're looking at big picture stuff uh, as far as, you know, the uh, opportunity and advantage to get a week, week and a half of practice leading up to going over to Europe, you know, some game experience for some of your young guys that uh, haven't played at a truly high level yet, but you're also looking for cultural experiences and, and opportunities for your team to bond, which might not make a difference in November or December, but when you get into the dog days of the season, late January, February, um, when you kind of got to rely on, um, you know, understanding and knowing who that person is next to you in the locker room or a coach needing to understand and know uh, who who's going to be there uh, in a tough spot. That's when these kind of trips really kind of show their value, I think. Um, so uh, it'll be interesting to see how Santa Clara finishes out their European trip and if it kind of kickstarts them to have another great season. Because as I said many times, uh, you know, they could have been a fourth team in the NCAA tournament last year had it not been for a couple COVID shutdowns, uh, as well as an injury uh, to Joseph Brankett just a season ago. A couple other things to keep an eye on in the WCC. A little bit of uh, shocking news, I, not shocking in a bad way, um, but a good shocking is that Tommy Cousy, uh, six-year point guard. That's that's hard to say, six-year point guard in college, but spent six years in Moraga, Tom Acuzzi at St. Mary's um, after playing for the Orlando Magic in Summer League and playing really well, averaged over 17 points a game in Summer League. Um, he signed a make-good contract with the San Antonio Spurs. So he will be at training camp. Um, you know, Greg Popovich, that front office with R.C. Buford, uh, they've always valued guys that understand their roles and know what needs to be done and value winning. Um, I know San Antonio has struggled in recent years in the win loss column. Um, you know, but when you look at Tommy Cousy, he's an older rookie. Uh, I would imagine from seeing his growth and progression of, of, of the time he had Moraga, he will, he is a worker. He will continue to work. He'll try to find a niche where maybe, he presents an opportunity for the Spurs to keep him. Uh, that would be a, a heck of an accomplishment. That'd be another tremendous success story for the WCC to send another guard um, to the NBA. And that starts to kind of throw the question out there over the last 10 to 12 years, you know, who's had better point guards um, Gonzaga or St. Mary's. Now Gonzaga's had some great ones, um, but they haven't necessarily translated to the nba like a patty mills like a matthew della vadova is tommy cousy going to break through to the nba you know gonzaga in recent years um yes jalen suggs uh has made it to the league andrew nemhart drafted by the pacers um but those are the last two years before that it's been quite some time nigel williams goss been a year um but gonzaga has been known more so for their bigs making it to the nba uh in recent memory so uh, interesting thing to keep an eye on. Speaking of point guards with Gonzaga, 
you know, I'm really excited to see Nolan Hickman uh, this upcoming year. Uh, I think, you know, he's one of those guys that, um, you know, had such a big time pedigree coming out of high school and initially committed to Kentucky, was able to get out of that commitment, signed with Gonzaga. Um, he played really well in, in, at, at different times last year. But when you're playing behind uh, a guy like Andrew Nemhart and Roger Bolton, it's hard to find minutes because uh, Nemhart why would you take him off the floor? He he was as solid and dynamic a point guard as you're going to find in college basketball a season ago. And Roger Bolton, uh, kind of as a two-way combo guard, can handle it on occasion, uh, was really good uh, at the two guard. Um, you know, it was something that, you know, I from what I saw is Hickman did a really nice job of when he had his opportunities, he played well. And he grew throughout the year. And from what I've seen, I've heard he's had a tremendous off season. Um, so it'll be interesting to see, but really where I wanted to go with this is uh, Nolan Hickman kind of giving back to where he came from. He's a, it's an impressive story. And the fact that he's young, uh, I think he's only 20 years old now, but he's going into a sophomore year at Gonzaga and he is already has a foundation where he's helping kids in the Seattle area where he grew up at. He's run a, free basketball camp uh, on a number of occasions now during the summertime uh, for kids to get an opportunity to be around some of um, their, their maybe mentors who are in the midst of doing what some of these other kids want to do themselves. So um, good for, good for Nolan Hickman. Um, awesome to see. And I'm excited to see his growth as well as Hunter Salas's growth this off season and what it means and what it looks like for Gonzaga uh, this upcoming season. And last news obviously chet holmgren's out for the season uh sam presti has had uh some some public statements about you know a little bit about the disappointment um but the frustration for chet and knowing that you know with all the background research they've done um they understand and they they know and they feel that chet's mindset is built uh, to, to be great in the long run. And this is just a temporary setback. So it'll give him a chance to see the game from a little bit different viewpoint um, professionally from the sidelines. It'll give him a chance to, uh, which everybody's going to say, get in the weight room, which I'm sure will be the case. Uh, I'm sure with a boot on your foot, uh, you can still get form shooting in and, and do a few different things as long as you're not weight bearing and pounding on, uh, on that foot. But um, the one thing that's interesting about this, and it's not in a good way, I don't think, um, because he's missing a season, but it's in an interesting and unique way to just look at a potential pairing of who should be the 2023 number one pick in the NBA draft. And that is a similar player to Chet Holmgren. If the Thunder were to somehow manage to get uh, the number the number one pick next season. Uh, it would be seven foot three um, phenom. He's only a teenager. I believe he's 18 years old now. He will be in the draft next year. His name's Victor Wembanyama. Um, he it's almost a spitting image watching him and Holmgren and their skill set, the way they shoot it, the way they handle it. Um, you know, their ability to, to block shots, uh, push the ball in transition as a big. Uh, a lot of people think. When Benyana's upside is even greater than Chet Holmgren. Um, so it would be interesting to see those two paired together, two very versatile seven foot and seven foot three inch um, uh, twin towers, I guess you could call them. You know, it kind of harkens back to the days of Ralph Sampson and Nakeem Olajuwon, or possibly Tim Duncan and, and David Robinson when Duncan first came into the league. But, um, you know, that was something that, that kind of has popped up and is piquing some curiosity from uh, a, a lot of kind of analysts to sit, think about what would that look like? What would that be? How would they work together? So just something to keep an eye on with the Chet Holmgren front. But appreciate you listening in on a WCC Monday weekly roundup. So take care. Have a great day. Got lots of good stuff coming up on Gonzaga Nation Media Network this week.